All right, well, it's to Dallas, who uh, had an embarrassing loss to the Philadelphia Eagles yesterday, 34-6. Micah Parsons, not happy, talked about head coach Mike McCarthy's future in Dallas. You know, that's above my pay grade about if Mike is coaching again next year. You know, Mike can leave and go wherever he wants, but guys, I you know, I kind of feel bad for his guys like Zach Martin and guys who might be on their last year or on their way out, you know, because – that's who I wanted to hold the trophy for. You know, you want to w win games and do great things with those type of legends who put in more time and work than Mike McCarthy ever did. Ooh, Craig. Oof. All your reactions I mean, to his sound. I, it's one of those deals where I don't want to read into it, but he said what he said. You know, and that's uh, it's, it's disrespectful to Mike McCarthy and shows a disconnect that we all know exists there. You have a lame duck head coach who is not coming back next year. The owner is a big part of that as well. And now you've got your most recognizable and probably most talented player when he's healthy telling you, I don't care if the head coach is back next year or not. This is the dysfunction that you know, exudes throughout the Cowboy organization. So I'm sure it's hard to hear it if you're a McCarthy yeah. fan or if you're Mike himself. But I'm not surprised by it. This is Dallas Cowboy football. Yeah, it sounds like the team is giving up on Mike McCarthy. That's the bottom line. When you have your leader and Michael Parsons is the face of your defense, pretty much say, hey, I don't care what happens to my head coach, which normally doesn't happen. It's usually the player does protect the head coach throughout a conversation, especially in front of the press. I think overall, man, I do like what he did say, though. He goes, listen, man, there's guys in this locker room who put in a lot of work for this organization yes. who deserve to be a part of a winning team. I, we, whatever you want to say, haven't lived up to the expectations that the Cowboys – want us to live up to. I think moving forward, Michael Parsons, he's in debt to this team too, by the way. Between the injuries and not playing like an MVP caliber player, he has to pick up his game. So if you want to have any, if you want to save your teammate, be the guy they need you to be. Sure. Right. I, I think for the Dallas Cowboys, and this is the complaint I've always had about the Dallas Cowboys, it's one thing to hire a coach. It's another thing to empower a coach. Mm. And those comments to me say that our coach has never been empowered. So the bottom line from an organizational standpoint, if you hire your coach but you don't empower him, guys don't respect him. And you know as well as I do as a player, man, sure. if that guy, like there are two types of fear. There's the biblical sense of fear, awesome reverence and respect, and then there's fear. Like this guy's got the authority to fire my ass. Yeah, 100%. And right now yeah. you look at that, like those comments right there, we don't and have that, we don't have Jerry respect. Jones is false. Right, it's 100% Jerry Jones' yeah. fault. We don't respect the fact that Mike McCarthy hasn't been empowered to be in charge of this organization. It's all Jerry Jones. So you, as long as that level of dysfunction exists with the Dallas Cowboys, there's a reason they haven't won a Super Bowl in, what, 30-some-odd years or whatever it is? <laughs> Correct. And it's also why you don't allow a head coach to be a lame duck. Like I, I know it's he's playing out his contract and all of that, but that question gets asked because it's like, hey, season's over, you're not going to the playoffs, tick, 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 you're play not playing well enough for your coach to get an extension, are you okay with him not coming back next year? And the first part of what Micah said there is true. He can leave and go wherever he wants or wherever we'll hire him. Like, right? There's obviously a much longer runway for coaches. You can coach for 50 years, you guys know. You can only play for 8, 10, 12 years, whatever it is. The average career is less than four years. It's that last part where he's like, I care more about the guys because we put in way more time than Mike McCarthy. Well, this is the, that was the disrespectful part. But this is also dangerous from a team aspect, and Mark can back this up. When you're a head coach, you stand in front of your team, your team that's going to listen to you, you never want to fall on deaf ears, right? When the guys just aren't listening to you. It doesn't matter if you cry. That happens to with the Jets, right? Rex would be so hard bit. He would cry. He would just throw stuff. And we, we would hear him. But we were losing, right? And then so the, the emotions and losing just weren't adding up. So he's like, Rex, man, do your thing. But we know we're done. That's where Mike McCarthy's at right now. It doesn't matter what he does anymore or what right. he says. This team is not going to listen to him or adhere to him. And by the way, I, there's a, that's that's not even the worst thing I heard after the game. If you guys have it for me here, Jerry Jones, of course, because, you know, I got to talk after every single game. Yeah. You know, don't let the coach talk and tell you why we won or lost. Let me give you my opinion on it. So this is right after the game, just to show you the level of dysfunction in Dallas. You've got Micah Parsons telling you, I don't give a rat's ass about my head coach. You can fire him today. My words, not his, right? Then you've got Jerry Jones telling the world how much disrespect he has for Dak Prescott, who's out for the year now with his hamstring injury, listen to Jerry Jones putting this on Dak Prescott. Watch this. I don't want to be sarcastic, but are you got the same arithmetic I've got? We've won three games with Dak. Okay, so I'm just saying uh, we weren't playing well with Dak. 
at all. I thought that uh, basically uh, we'd look better tonight without Dak. I thought we'd look better on offense than we look without Dak. Uh, seen Cooper uh, play better than uh, than uh, we played tonight. Philadelphia's got a lot to do with that. That's what it is. So, I expected us to be better because Dak Prescott wasn't our starting quarterback. You just gave the guy half a billion dollars. But my expectation was that we'd be better for the simple reason that Dak Prescott wasn't playing. Yeah, your quarterbacks threw for a sum total of 66 <laughs> yards. Yeah, oh yeah, right. but you were better without Dak. Like, well, like, it just shows you that he never wanted to write that check. 